is it like for somebody your age, it's like, hey, fuck off. And for somebody right. older than you, uh, fuck off, sir. Right. And now, <laughs> cheese wits. Hey, we got a new review. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try and get on the computer when what? I get back to the house in a couple minutes. Okay. Should we? What? Should we wait uh-huh. to get started until you're on the computer? No, no, we've got to, no. We've got to experience that transition. <laughs> yeah, you got you, you got to have that one because okay. we've I got to hear the, the language is about to come. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. This is fantastic. Well, do you guys want to hear the new review that we got? We got a review. Who is it from? It is from Mickey H seventy one. Chris, the one that you did last was it last week? It didn't. Yeah. It hasn't shown up yet. Bullshit. It's not there. Fuck. Okay, I sent a, Mickey- I sent a note to Apple because um, I have one friend who said she's done it now twice and they've it's still not there. Um, Wally, none of your people have done it or, or that they haven't shown up. Yeah. So I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know if Apple will bother to get back to me, but I sent them a note asking. Well, come on. We've got 12 subscribers. N- asking nicely what the fuck, Apple. <laughs> so here's the here's the new review we got from Mickey H71. Five stars. Love this podcast. I finally have something to look forward to on Mondays. Very funny, and I'm always entertained. Definitely recommend. I mean, they cuss all the time. What's not to love? On a side note, I'm almost never double booked at a bowling alley if you ever need a third when Chris (laughs) no-shows. See, there you go. I'm almost, I'm almost, but there's still a possibility. I'm almost never booked. Never double Double booked. Almost never. Fantastic. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> well, that, that, that's kind of interesting because I was talking to um, I have a friend named Mick who um, I went to college with who he and I were talking um, over the weekend. And he was telling me he works for um, a city in Massachusetts. He's a city employee okay. of a highway department. And, and he was telling me they just had to go through training. And oh wait, I, I had to write it down because I would not ever remember what it's called. Working in the multi-generational workforce. Oh, wow. You have to go through a training that teaches you how to work with people who are older and younger. So I went online, I Googled this, and I, I checked it out. It's fucking retarded. Wait, wait, I better not use that word, right? It's fucking insane. Okay, that's better. <laughs> yeah, so, crazy is way better. It's multi-generational. What do you have to do? Is it like is it like for somebody your age, it's like, hey, fuck off. And for somebody right. older than you, uh, fuck off, sir. Right. <laughs> it, it's so it's so ridiculous. Could you fuck off By the way, please when, when you get a word, chance? Re- when I use the word retarded, I'm using it in the 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 Definition the, the, the how you the, the real definition of that word just means off. No, you know? I mean, the actual definition in, of that word means slow. No, it doesn't. It does. the The word means slow. Look it up. No, go ahead. I'll wait. I, you know, I'm looking it up. Go right? ahead. I'll wait right here. I'm I'm typing it in right now. Define retarded. Okay, <laughs> retarded. Well, yeah, because they get less <laughs> less advanced in mental, physical, and social development. But no, retarded in used music. To mean that in music, it's a musical term as well, and to retard means to slow, delay, or hold back in terms of progress, development, or accomplishment. Mm-hmm. That makes more sense to me. Mm-hmm. Well, in that case, that's we're all retards then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We'll be back after this. Listen, so, so we now, diff- I think we just got canceled again. Differently oh, able people aren't going to listen to us now. Great. Fantastic. Now, that's just fucking swell. They can figure out how to use the damn computer. They're not going to listen to us once they figure it out. We're oh done. God, Wally, stop. Okay. I know. I know. I, listen, I'm just, I'm not being serious. Okay. So working with multi-generational, the, the stuff it tells you is so just... All they've done is taken and said, you have to communicate with this group and this group. It's all the same shit we've always done. There's nothing new. I- they've just figured out a way how to make money out of saying, you know, it's really hard for people who are 60 to work with people who are 22. No, it's not. I mean, I've been seeing for 
a while now things about, you know, first it was when millennials were first coming into the workforce and then Gen Z about how they prefer to work. And I keep thinking, fuck them. Since when do you get to make your own right. rules just because that's your preference? Like if this is how the job offer, and that's not to say every job has good policies, but that's to say, no. if this is the job's policy and you've accepted that job and the policy, then that's how you're going to prefer to work. Well, so, so look at you, you don't be able to see this on, on the podcast, but this is, I, I, I can't pasted and copied and pasted a bunch of research stuff. I'm telling you what, it sucks to be a Gen Z -er. Yeah. It absolutely, the, it, it, according to the research, they're the loneliest group of people. Is that because they're in their house on social media all the time? They're among the laziest group of people. Mm, I I doubt that. However, they say, according to this, Gen Zers would say they work really hard, except they only want to work when they want to work and not when you need them to work. <laughs> <laughs> Same. It says Gen Zers are, um, have the highest stress levels. They consider themselves the people with the highest stress levels. Gen Zers being folks who are between the ages of 16 and 24. Um, okay. Interestingly enough, baby boomers and 75 years and older are people with the least amount of feelings of stress or hate. That's because or are most by the comfortable time you get to that lives. age, you don't have to give a fuck about anything anymore. Well, here's the other. Now, this one's a beautiful one. Going to quit their jobs. 70%, if this says 61% of Gen Zers and millennials are going to be quitting their jobs in the next year. So, you know what that means? They're moving in with the baby boomers. <laughs> you gotta make, you better get an extra room, Ma. Well, I think the Gen Zers' parents are actually Gen Xers. Yeah, I think you're right. So, they're gonna have to, too. Let me see what their stress level is. They're, they're, Right in the middle, five two, five point two percent. I'll give you a stress level. <laughs> oh, you by the way, I'm on the computer. That sounds so good. Yeah, How we don't that? we don't see you though. Turn on your turn your cam on, the man. Turn on on this damn stupid thing. <clears throat> I'll Guess see what, what I can do. Wow, do you sound? Oh, you sound like you're on a microphone. Yeah, I'm gonna need this to be same the microphone that both of you all got. I'm gonna need this to yeah. be the Wally. standard from now on, Chris. I oh, will do are, are you using an RE20? This is an RE20 going through a roadcaster, yes. Yeah, the RE20. My, my RE20 is going through a... Uh, I don't have an RE20. My RE20 is going through a DBX. It might be a little slower. It might be retarded on my end. Oh, my God. <laughs> we found our word of the day. Our oh, by the way, yay. so what do we think? Uh, I, was, I was looking for... Um, I posted this a, a, a little bit ago on my Facebook page and um, with the, with the, oh, so this is Super Bowl Christ. Sunday. We're recording this on Super Bowl Sunday. So let's just put that out there. Right. Oh, okay. No, no. First of all, first of all, I don't want to get in this bullshit about somebody saying that we said Super Bowl. God damn it. I almost did it. It's the big game, Wally. You're allowed oh. to say Super Bowl. If you're, well, talking shit. About are we going to make money off of this? No. First of oh, all. Okay. And second, oh, well, fuck. All you right. can My say bad. Super Bowl. If you're just referring to the game, you can't say we are giving away a Super Bowl prize because can we talk about we're not the Super Bowl? Yeah, because I need to take one every single week. We we talk about your oh, super bowel. Chris. Don't don't do. bring the hey go yeah. Why don't you bring the microphone in the bathroom with you? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna take a turd, not take a mic. <laughs> so 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 uh, um, I'm wondering when I was looking for because I play DFS daily fantasy, um, and I was looking and I, and I won money today in soccer, uh, European soccer. Anyways, I was looking for. What city do we think will sub sustain the most damage post game? Well, as a result of rioting and burning and looting. My brother, I I posted something today about how I have lived in both Pennsylvania and Kansas and therefore can confidently state that I give no fucks about this game. And yes, my bro that. my brother responded the last time Philadelphia fans ate something like like philadelphia fans ate horse shit and we don't need to in the streets and we don't need to see that again i don't let me see if i can find it i don't know what yeah, well, about. philadelphia did riot 
and and do a lot of damage in their last Super Bowl win. Yeah. In whatever that was, 2018 or something. Yeah. And and I've been in both cities, and quite frankly, um, the the Kansas City, uh, the Kansas side of Kansas City, could use with a little sprucing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, but the stadiums in the Missouri side. Yeah, oh, oh, and the Missouri side could too. I've been on both sides, and and the city itself is is. I, I'm not a fan. Mm. And actually, I was when I was in St. Louis, I was afraid to get out of the car in St. Louis. Wow. Uh, so would I? I would be too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking scary city. Yeah, I have an ex and, who lives in St. Louis, so there's another reason not to go. Yeah. Well. Is there a city? No, no. Is, is what city is safe <laughs> where there may not be an ex? Most cities are safe. I don't have any exes in Nashville. No, 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 no exes in Nashville. So you, your your exes are um, mostly concentrated to the Midwest of the country. No, well, except for that one that fuck bag that's here. I mean, the only ones that I really would need to have to. Uh, uh, avoid that I would even have a problem with running into. There's the one in St. Louis, which really I wouldn't have a problem running into him. He's he's not, he's he's fine. Like he, that would be fine. You could um, beat him up. No, it's not even that I could beat him up. It's like it, that that was so long ago. It doesn't even matter. Right. Um, and then and then shithead who lives in Maryland and shithead. Yep. Yeah, and then the rest of them. Eh. It's fine. You don't have that many. You have five, six. Yeah. It's not like you've got a, you know, it's not like you're counting, you know, having to break in an abacus or something. <laughs> <laughs> it, Can it, I tell you not- a serious story? Yeah. My, my, my second ex-wife, second ex-wife, I said something about an abacus and she said, is that what killed the Jews? <laughs> no, no, honey, that's not. That is not even close to what happened. Uh, she didn't Abacus. say that. Oh, Wait. you can't make this shit up. You can't make. And Wait, you know what, you know what my second ex-wife and mad. Philadelphia Wait, Eagles she... fans have in common? What's that? They they both like a good greased pole. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, yeah. The greased oh. poles didn't stop the rioting in Philadelphia last time either. She, I can't imagine why. <laughs> An abacus killed the Jews. What did that's what that's what my first ex uh, second ex-wife thought. My first ex-wife con- was an adult. What was she confusing that with though? The abacus? Yeah. Auschwitz. Oh, for fuck's oh. sake. I yeah. never would have gotten that. See, not even not even fucking close. I, right? I would not have I would not have made that either. And, not and even Auschwitz close. is not a thing. No, well uh, again, she's 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 young and brainless. So Oh my word. Yeah. You never got the pleasure of meeting that one, did you? No, she she, she no, was wondering I've never about. Met, the, I don't think I've met any of them. Yeah, there was no. Abacus. There, there was. Kind of wish camp, I didn't. Camp Abacus, and then there was uh, there was General Pythagoras. He was a bastard. He was a bastard Nazi. That Pythagoras, he was terrible. So, people in Maryland, they have a weird accent sometimes, mm-hmm. and unless you you know listen uh-huh. like me, but they all they got thing you all know, talk like hissing times, right? Or uh, pretty close, right, Chess? Yeah. So. Ex-wife number two had was from the Midwest, and she had no idea what this Maryland accent was. So I just start stream of consciousness bullshitting <laughs> her one night and said, well, listen, back in the 1600s, late 1600s, Lord Calvert ruled Maryland <laughs> before Maryland was a colony. And, of course, Lord Calvert's a bottle of fucking whiskey. I said, well, Lord Calvert. There is a Calvert you know, County, though. See, there is a Calvert County, but Lord Calvert had a stroke while in office, but he didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Why so office? he started speaking weird and he told, he started talking like this all the time. I said, so all, all the Marylanders were so stupid. They thought that was the regal way to speak. And that's why Maryland has an accent. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a new TV show. You can get Jeff Foxworth. Are you dumber than Chris's second wife? <laughs> Jesus hey, did you Christ, guys ever the watch bar the real wire? fucking low. Watch uh, no, did, did you watch. ever watch The Wire? No. Um, I did. Yeah, ex-wife number one was an extra on that show. Oh no, kidding! Because yeah. there are a couple of guys on that show who got the accent, and I don't know if it came naturally to them or if they just learned it, but they had the Maryland accent. Had it down. Yep. Yeah, I don't. I I'm not familiar with the Maryland accent. If you watch Hairspray, 
Um, mm-hmm. There's a scene where John Travolta is playing a woman and John Travolta has the accent down pat. Yeah. All right. I know that because I wasn't from there when I moved there and this is, this has been true from, you know, when I moved to Texas, people would call me on the request line at the radio station talking about you ain't from here. Are you, you from New York or something? Because I, they hated the way that I talked when I was in Maryland. Um, what was it? That I, I gave said? you shit. Oh, I said there, there's a road called Mount Zion road. Uh huh. Yeah. It's right up from here. Before, before I got to that station, my experience with the, with the word Zion, and I'm not a religious person. I don't Church, really. I don't read Bibles, but I was in gospel choirs when I was in college, and yes. uh, and other choirs. And so my experience with that word was in music and in songs. It's pronounced Zion, and so right. for a while, I when I first got there, I would pronounce this road as Mount Zion Road. And some dude called the, didn't call the request line. He called the front office and they put him through to my office and he left me a five minute voicemail about how stupid I was and how I should go back to where I came from because I couldn't pronounce Zion properly. Wow. And so I went on the air and Chris, you, I I don't think you were on with me yet at this point. Not yet. No, I went on the air and I said, listen, I'm still pretty new here. So if I say the name of your town or the name of your street wrong, you don't have to get mad at me for it. Just call me and tell me what the correct way is. And I will never make that mistake again. I promise. And some guy, some other guy called up and he goes, he called on the request line and he goes, is it the way you pronounce Mount Zion road? Cause I think that's adorable. Uh. And then we had a bless whole, your heart, right? bless, bless her cunning heart. And then we had a whole discussion with people calling in about the the way people say things in Maryland that's different from maybe other places. And you know that's where I learned that it's Balmer, and it's that's that's Baltimore, Wally. For and I, I I told you too on the air one day that it's not a hurricane, it's hurricane. It's a hurricane. Yep. Uh, a hurricane. There's there's Washington. Washington D.C. is right down the road. Uh, Washington. There's an R in there. Washington. Yep. Washington. You're right. Washington. Oh yeah, yeah. Washington. I, I I used to get that all the time when I when I was living in when I went from New England to because but I've never had a really a New England accent. Hmm. Or you got a, a you've got a little bit. I've picked it up a little more now. Yeah. That I'm not on the air every day, and so I'm not as aware of it. But the only thing I ever really get huge shit for. And I mean, I got dressed down for this is I cut uh, an ad for a company oh, and I, I wrote it and cut it. And I said, Av instead of Avenue. And I got fucking tooled. The salesperson came to me, the person whose company was says, we don't say Av in this part of Virginia. We say Avenue. <laughs> And they, she fucking tooled me. I told There's you all about so Satan. Things. I worked for the Satan that I worked for in Texas. Uh-huh. Yes. When he hired me, well, he didn't hire me. The operations manager hired me, but he interviewed me. And before he allowed the hiring to go through, he said, you do anything about that Yankee accent? And I said, <laughs> oh, I, 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 that, yeah. I, I wasn't aware that I had one. And he said, oh, you do. And it's bad. Oh, okay. right. Cool. You got that. And I, when I was young, the worst one that I did, I was reading a PSA and I was talking about the Acrodices of Washington and blah, 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 blah. Uh, you want to know uh, more? Yeah. Call the Acrodices, the Acrodices of Washington and blah, 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 blah. He sent me and a the letter. request line, the request line <laughs> rings. So I pick it up. I'm like, WINX, hello, Christopher. Yeah. This is your mother calling. <laughs> Again, like some old other haggard bitch is going to be calling me. And I pick it up. And I'm like, yeah, mom, what's up? He says, who are you reading that for? I said, the Acrodices of Washington. Can you tell me what that is? I said, you know, the thing with the priests. And she says, that's Archdiocese, you stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm the air. Well, yeah, that's fantastic. and I talked about a place with a cyan food once with a what? A, a cyan, cyan food. food. 
Really? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Did you, do you eat your Asian food with 16. chopsticks? A Asian food. It was actually a Asian cousin. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Instead of saying Asian cuisine. Well, if we're oh, going to yeah, talk I... about dumb shit we've said on the air, we could talk about the time in Texas when I interviewed my first rodeo star and asked him what is best. Rodeo. Is that like a porn star? Like every <laughs> rodeo star? star. No, in, in rodeo. <laughs> like there's there are stars of rodeo. There are rodeo stars in porn, I'm sure. But I'm from New York where we don't have rodeo. So mm-hmm. uh, it was an honest question when I asked him what his best time was. <laughs> Sorry. Mm-hmm. What his what? What his best time was. Oh, his best time uh, in the rodeo? What did yeah. he say? He looked yeah. at me like I was an idiot and said, eight seconds. Because <laughs> yeah, well. that's the time that you have to, that you're shooting for. Yeah, yeah, but you should, then you look at him and just say, well, I didn't know if you were any good or not. <laughs> <laughs> what was your best time in the rodeo? Oh, it was when I had the McGillicuddy twins. <laughs> that was my best time in the rodeo. <laughs> Good God! I mean, you do you did have pornography in New York, didn't you? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah that, How that about was, that shit about Ron Jeremy not being uh, competent enough to stand trial? He oh, literally, I, this I guy literally what? fucked his brains out. Yeah, Ron Ron Jeremy was on trial for rape or 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 something, some, some flavor, assault, and yeah, yeah, re- yeah. Within the last three weeks, oh, okay. yeah. And they they couldn't find him fit for trial because he was like a dementia setting in. So the but big joke is. Well, well, and he looks, yes or no, like he fucked his brains out. He oh, literally yeah, he looks does. that way. He I, has always not. looked kind of gross to me. He well, he's always looked bad. absolutely awful. And it's like, God, people will fuck anything. Mm-hmm. I have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> have a Says chance. the guy who's get getting for married it. for the third time. He's yeah, well, unbel- he was just unbelievably sickly, decrepit looking. But that that's part of the issue of being any sort of film person the last you remember what some of somebody is the last time you saw them right on in movies or film you don't consider 40 years have gone by <laughs> this guy looks like shit now well, he probably about george did a bunch jetson of drugs. looks fine <laughs> oh george Jet- speaking of george jetson uh, he's and supposed to be born this week, about george jetson, but this is going to be cartoonish Mm-hmm. One of my absolute favorite movie lines of all time, without any exceptions, is from Michael Keaton in the movie Night Shift. Do you know that movie? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yep. With Henry Winkler. And and they have the, and he's sitting behind the desk. Michael Keaton's sitting behind the desk. And Henry Winkler comes in and says, Oh, we got to get going. We got to go do something. And he's watching something on a little TV, Michael Keaton. Right. And he just looks at the TV and he goes, oh, that Barney Rubble. What an yes. actor. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember it's that. such a great fucking line. <laughs> I'm watching that movie and I somebody, it was it was five or six years ago, last time I saw it, I guess. Because Shelley Long was a prostitute in that, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Big boa. So we're sitting there and we're watching it. And about halfway through the movie, I just look at the girl and I'm like, this is the weirdest episode of Happy Days I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's something to be said for going back and looking at not just stuff from our era, however old you are, if you're 20 or if you're 50 or 60, going back and just looking at that stuff, you get a different appreciation. You, you now, and, and sometimes you understand shit that you had no idea at the time. You know what? It's funny that you say that because a couple of weeks ago, Wally, you mentioned, you were talking about some artists that we played back in the day and you mentioned oh dear. Joshua Cadison. And yeah. when oh, you said Jesus it, I went, <gasps> because I realized that I had not thought of that name in 30 years, but that I wore that album out. I loved that album so much. And it was when I was in that little apartment behind the radio station in Cortland. And I would, I, I had that album on repeat all the time. 
And then it just somehow disappeared from my brain. And I forgot all about Joshua Cadison until you said his name. And I pulled up that album the other day and listened to it. And it's still just as good. But yeah. now you're right. I understand the songs in a completely different way now that I've lived some life. Because I was, what, yeah. 20 years old at the time. <laughs> That's absolutely true. When you go back and listen to some of the, whether it's listening to music or watching movies or TV, you, you fucking start to understand the underneath messages, mm -hmm. the underneath stories, you start to see and hear that shit. And you're like, holy fuck. Right. Like one of my absolute favorite, most descriptive songs, uh, I mean, uh, lines in a song is Carol King. And uh, she, the, 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 the lyric is it, it chilled her bones to the marrow. And you fucking think of that and say, holy, f you know how fucking cold that is. Yeah. For, the, for for it to hit you that deep in your fucking soul, to hit to go through every the hardest part of your body and hit that part of your body, you've been touched, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I was going back because Burt Backrack died uh, a oh. couple of days ago. Yeah, and I was going back, and I fucking had no idea that he wrote the Naked Eyes song. Always something there to remind me. I had no fucking idea, and I went back and looked at. This motherfucker wrote so many songs. Like well, back it was then, originally done by somebody else. Big song. Um, back then, I we didn't who always have, something there. unless you're looking at the liner notes for that information, you didn't really know yeah, who wrote no songs. You have no idea. No, no, I, no. But but we knew a lot about who did them because we fucking did that ASCAP BMI shit we talked about before. I never knew who wrote songs. So, no, I, I mean, you had to write down who the fucking writer was, but... It's, it's oh, like I, any other. I didn't have to do that. By the time I had to do ASCAP and BMI reports, it was like a thing that Selector did for for you. Yeah, yeah. So well, I didn't have to do any of that. I, I forget you're so young. Mm -hmm. I am. I, but, but as you go back and, and and you look at this, you go, "Holy, this fucking guy, so much." These for and he, they're forgotten people. Let's face it. But back, he's he's a forgotten guy. Yeah. For the most part, but you know, raindrops keep falling on my head. These huge songs. That are part of a great movie. So now I'm going to go back and watch Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, which is a great movie. Mm -hmm. One of the best Westerns, uh, a top 10 Western, it's got to be, along with Magnificent Seven. Shane is my favorite, yada, 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 yada. But these people get so forgotten that, uh, that, that influenced a generation, two generations, three generations of artists of all kinds mm -hmm. and of people. Which is kind of weird. It's kind of weird they just get thrown to the side. I mean, I don't know if they get thrown to the side so much as they just stay. They step out of the limelight. They step out of the public eye. I mean, look at Dolly Parton is not still getting radio airplay in most cases when she puts no. out new music, but she's still but very much in the it. public eye because she's doing a new thing well, every five minutes. But, but here's the reason I think part of that is part of the reason is because younger people, and particularly Miley Cyrus have adopted and and it's her aunt or whatever her godmother her godmother yeah so she keeps her in, in you know she keeps her in the limelight and she has this giant fucking um amusement park na named for her and stuff it's not named which, for which, her it's hers yeah it's hers which i've been to <clears throat> have you i've never been yes i have been and one of my uh, journeys across the country it's also a place where i drove when i drove to the smoky mountains it's fucking beautiful mm hmm Fucking fabulous. But but yeah, I, I think this younger people, no, oh, this is horrible. When we were younger, we did the same things. It's taken me to get to this point in my life to appreciate what was something when I was 10 and 18 and 22. And I think that's younger people tend to do that, including myself. Just young people in general. It's all about what's hip and fashionable right this very well, fucking of course. minute. You can't be worried about what used to be popular when you're trying so desperately to be okay with the people yeah. around you. But now now I look now, I'm like, fuck, it's fabulous shit. It's fa and this now this brings me to just something I sent you a note about uh, a few days ago. Yes. <laughs> so and, and it was <clears throat> I sent uh, Jess a note, Chris, the other day. I'd I'd gotten uh uh, something on my news feed and it was um, talking about how podcasts are becoming very popular and, and that talk format is very popular and, and more and more people are turning to podcasts and 
It was, Jess, I will let you take it now. It was presented by? It was presented by iHeartMedia or iHeartRadio. Jesus Christ. And it said that iHeart was the biggest, the, the biggest producer of podcasts of any Jesus. company. And I said, the fucking irony that the company yeah. that zeroes in on its radio personalities and forces them to talk less as if that makes a fucking difference. Instead of instead of teaching them how to be more, uh, what's the word? Compelling. Entertaining. Entertaining, compelling, interesting. Right. Instead of teaching them that, they just say, no, you have to talk less. They're the biggest producers of podcasts in the country. Right. Well, and and so even more, I wonder if they can see the irony there that there's a company that three three or four years ago bankrupted and wrote off two billion dollars. It might have actually been ten billion, but I think two billion was known about two billion dollars because they couldn't fucking run radio to make money. Yep. And they're involved because they because exactly what you said: fewer people talk less. Blah 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 blah. And now they're making money by getting people who they – now, here's the very interesting part of that. They have no control over those people. They're exactly. just rebroadcasting their work. Exactly. Somebody else's work, which they're unable to influence. Meanwhile, what's his name up there in the ivory tower didn't have to give up his jet or the misting tunnel in his office. <laughs> the misting Hi, tunnel. Hi, I'm Bob Pittman. That's the one. <laughs> That's the Come guy. and mist with me. And this is why you don't work for the fucking company anymore, Jess. That's your uh, attitude towards Bob Pittman's mister. That's luckily, I never did because it was never it wasn't iHeart when when I was at WFRE and they weren't allowed to operate us. Who Remember? was it? Was it Clear Channel? Was it was our Clear check Channel still then? came from them. That's for fucking. It was Clear they, Channel. They, they owned us, but they it was Clear Channel and they owned us, but they weren't allowed to operate us because we were LMA. No, we no, were too many stations um, in the market. Too many stations in the market, and so they had to put us in a trust. We were operated by a trust. They weren't allowed to tell us what to do, which is <laughs> actually why we were successful because I was able to program the way I wanted to. Can you imagine uh, yeah. that? You own you own eight properties in a market, or or seven. Six of them you have control of them. They're all sucking ass. The one that you own that you have no control and have no input on is kicking the ass of the rest of your company. Yep. Uh huh. Which is so fucking fantastic. And then they're what? like, "Screw it, let's go get let's go get podcasts." Why? But why? This is for all companies. Why the fuck do you not? Why don't these CEOs figure out shit that you're just the CEO? That's it. You're, oh, li take the advice of fucking people. Take a look at what's happening. Your job isn't just to go in there and fucking cut expenses. Right. It's to create a good product. And, and that happens with companies all fucking all kinds of companies, not just the, the ones we happen to work for. Yep. That's what happened to Kmart. That's what happened to Sears. That's what happened to any of these gigantic, enormous, too big to fails that all failed. Mm-hmm. Is that they're they the the heads, it, it, they're led by morons or they're led by people who lose sight of the big picture to be in the small picture. Chris, sir, did, did you figure did you figure out your camera yet? Uh, clearly, no, I have not. Although I would like to look look at you, good people, without my mug on the screen as well. So is that is that good? I see you right there. Oh, you can see us now. Oh, you I can, can see, see you. Before, though. I could see you the whole time. One of my favorite things about um, this is when someone talks, the the little square or the little rectangle lights up. <laughs> Gets a little uh, frame around. Hi. It. You're amused so easily. Uh, okay, well, I'm old. By the I'm, way, that's I'm, not I'm, happening on mine. You're the, you're, oh, now it is. Yes, you know, now yours just did. Yours yeah. just lit up. I, I must reach a certain volume. I don't know. I don't know what it does, but yours yours wasn't lit up and then, and then it was, and then it was. Yep. So there it was. Ta-da. Yeah. 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 I, I like it. I like it very much. Yeah. Small things, small things amuse me in all of life. <laughs> all, oh, Jody's sick. Oh no. And, and she oh, took, a, so she took a COVID, uh, COVID test. Have, yeah. have any of you taken the COVID test at home? Which one? The one that you pee on? <laughs> oh wait, that's a different thing. That's the I'm wrong sorry. one, Chris. That's, I'm that, sorry. That's I, the I wrong always fuck that up. Test. 
That's when we, is that the one where you, you get the pee, you gargle, then you spit it on the thing? Correct. That's the wrong test. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I, yes, I have taken a COVID test at home. Yeah. So, so, and it has a T and a C on it. Mm-hmm. So I said to my wife and I said, oh, you don't have the COVID. And she said, how do you know? I said, see, there's only a line at the C. She says, what is it? I said, but there's bad news. C means you're a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, if I said that word to mine, today. if I said that word to mine, she would straight up just. Oh, oh really? Oh, oh yeah. no! So Jody said, "What did the T mean, twat?" <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I said, "No, nope, you're just a cunt." Sorry. <laughs> and and if and if it was a boy, you'd been a cock. That's all there is to it. it it's 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 the it's the test. So this is why you don't have enough friends. <laughs> But she, see, this is how my wife puts up with me for 30 plus years. She's put up with me because she gets me that old broad. Well, I would hope so after that long. Well, I'm sure she's going to kill me in my sleep at some point. Probably. That old broad. <laughs> yeah, we're at that age, though, now where that's not a bad thing anymore to be able to say that, I think. You I don't know. Broad and, or cunt? Old. Oh. Old. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I might have to t- imagine that. I might have to take a sensitivity course for marriage. <laughs> now that <laughs> 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 how to be married in a multi generational marriage. Well, how? now who are you marrying? A twenty year old? She, multi generational. She's, she's a year older than me. She's in a different decade than I'm in. I'm still the decade <laughs> behind her. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm still officially younger. Okay. Though her birthday is oh my lord. Her birthday's coming right up next okay. month. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. She'll be 60 plus 2. And I will be I will be how old am I? I get oh I'm am I 60? Not yet. No, I will be 60. Right. I'll be 60. <laughs> I fucking can't even No, no, she's going to be 60 plus 1 and then I'll be 60. Yeah. Okay. I, and here's, I do not feel 60, except my fucking body feels 75. Mm-hmm. That my, 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 my constitution, my desire to do my, uh, my synapses are still firing. My fucking body is just saying, listen, pal, sit the fuck down for a minute. I just. It's just it's it's wearing the fuck out of me. Yeah, when you my, start my, injuring yourself sleeping, that's that's when you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that happens. That happened. I, I had a doctor's appointment, and uh, they put me in a new um, inflammatory for uh, possible um, osteoporotic rheumatoid arthritis. Something I don't know. I feel like that should have been an anti-inflammatory. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, <laughs> anti-inflammatory. I'm being I'm being infla- I'm being inflammatory. I don't. It's an inflammatory, but it's a non-steroidal. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, and and the thing about it is it says, um, don't take this for long. Warning, this is an NSAID, um, can cause um, internal bleeding, yada, yada, yada. The doctor still prescribed it to me, and I've been hospitalized only twice in the last uh, 35 years or so. B- both times for internal bleeding. <laughs> oh, Wow. Does your doctor yeah, know but, that? Oh yeah, oh, yes, yes. Oh. I, I I was in 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 twice. One time, one time I, I puked so much blood. Well, both times I did just an incredible amount of blood from internal bleeding, and then had to be ambulanced away, and then emergency surgery, uh, and and those things happened about uh, two and a, two or three years apart. Um, it was just, uh, and it was from taking ibuprofen. Oh, were you taking it every day? My mother was like that. I had had it. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, did she, was she, I was taking it. Uh, the dentist prescribed it and it was too big of a dose and it was for, uh, I had a, had a root canal. So oh. there was some swelling. Oh. <laughs> and that put me in the hospital for a week well, and emergency surgery and, and stuff. Did, did your mother get uh, rushed to the hospital there? Uh, she actually wound up with uh, liver failure and a heart attack. Oh, yeah, fucking it can it can nail your ass. Yeah, well, you I don't it? remember the last time my mother was nailed in the ass, Wally. 
However, I can ask my father if he'd like. I was going to say, is See that a conversation it. you have with your mother on a regular basis? Because I no, feel no, like no, 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 no. that's no. a relationship we feeling, need to explore. I get the feeling Chris's dad would tell him straight out. Yeah, he probably would. I, I, I get the feeling you're saying, so, so dad, uh, did mom and he ask? Uh, when's the last time that happened? When Press you were born, back. son. <laughs> we don't <laughs> fucking the ass anymore. No, I think you could have just stopped it. We don't fuck anymore. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, that, my that, God. That, the, the last time my parents fucked is when one said, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> that was the last time. <laughs> Hill Street Blues was a hit show last night. They fucked. Hill Street Blues, uh, they were fucking the murder she wrote. Okay. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> oh, God. that Angela Lansbury. She is some kind of fun. Well, that, now, now, let's l- look at that show, though, for a, a second, Wally. Okay. T- take a real look at that, a real thought about that. How is this old bitch in an old main town? having a all of these celebrities dropping by and how is she solving all of these fucking murders is it that bad up there is it that bad in your part of the world that you need that old twat to solve the murders i will say wally every time i think about the fact that you're in maine i think about stephen king and i wonder if you're neighbors Uh, oh i'm i i no no well he he does not live what town does he live in i don't know yeah, I don't know either. I probably I could have you told lived you by his radio stations. 30 years ago, but I don't know. Yeah, he has radio stations. Yeah. I, so here are the people that I know I know that uh um um what's his name? Uh Barbarino has a place here. Travolta? Yeah. Travolta has a place here. Um what's her face? The the, the bitch who cooks a lot and went to jail for insider trading. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart has a place here. And, uh, and, oh, and of course, Stephen King's in Bangor. Is yeah, he in W W Z O N or something like that. And he's got that and a couple other stations up there and he lives yeah, right see, by him. So my lack of enthusiasm for icons of a society or, or of anything, I don't, I have no idea. Icons as a society. We went to my dad fucking in the ass to icons of society. <laughs> How, is my dad an icon of society for fucking in the ass? Is that what it is? <laughs> you know, hey, what you the know, hell? My, my 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 mom was getting taken over a fucking sawhorse by my father in the ass and turned around and said, John, retarded a little bit, John. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we get to. Christ, I hope they never hear this fucking thing. Right? Oh, uh, well, well, but uh, you, uh, here's the other thing that could happen with that, though, Chris. Your mother might make another one of those phone calls, Christopher. Oh, Christopher, <laughs> and she might let you know exact. It wasn't a sawhorse, Christopher. This is your father. Call- or your shit. This is your mother calling. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh uh, yeah. No, that's uh. No, I I have no. I I just don't put anybody on a pedestal. I I just don't. How far just, away is that from you, though? Bangor. Uh, two and a half hours, maybe. Okay. South. Jode. I'm gonna. I don't know how far it is. I'm gonna check right now. Okay. Because now you're oh. gonna ask the person that you referred to as a cunt or twat as to how far you may be above. Hey, that's area. the smartest thing you got in the building. Why not? All right. <laughs> there you go. Why the heck? Look at this. Joe, how far is Bangor? Two hours. Two hours, she says. Okay. So you're you're north of Bangor? We're north of Bangor, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you east of Bangor? Or are you west of Bangor? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Chris is saying. Could, yeah, could no. you piss on Canada from where you are? No, no, oh no, I'm not. No, we're we're in the uh, southwestern part of the state, sort of. Oh, of. no kidding. Okay. Yeah, we're 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 about three and a half hours from Boston, uh, north of Boston. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm going to be up there in a couple of weeks. I'm going to be in up. north. I'll be in North Adams, Massachusetts, in two weeks, wherever the hell that is. Oh, I, I, oh, you're doing your trip stuff. Yes. I'll be yeah, playing we're, bowling we're, in Connecticut and then going to North Adams for another bowling event. Oh. Hmm. Maybe you guys can meet up and we can do an episode where you're in the same camera space. Is is it a trophy? Is it a trophy event? No, actually, I'm going to get taken over the sawhorse. 
<laughs> and wow. everyone's going to be just fine with it. Okay. Now, now, when you go to these bowling events, it, it, you don't, these tournaments are not duck pin tournaments, are they? Oh, yeah. They're all ducks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't oh, know yeah. duck pin was that popular. Yeah. The highest. You find another there's, duck pin location. There's eight duck pin lanes in North Adams. Um, the tournament I'm going to be doing is in Hamden, Connecticut. No, that's not true. It's in Mansfield Station. Wherever the University of Connecticut is, it's right next to their campus. Really? Yeah. Yeah, see, you know, it kind of makes sense of you because because duck pin bowling to me is, uh, it feels like a, a bowling that goes much better with alcohol and college students and alcohol and duck pin bowling sort of makes well, sense. Well, it does. And, you know, everybody's always ribbing everybody. Oh. I, I threw a ball this morning and it hit, it hit like a potato. <laughs> and just, 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 just nothing happened. And guy that was bowling next to me says, you know, next time you throw a ball, maybe you should take the tampon out of your pussy. See what happens. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. This is what this guy said to you. That's what he said to me. Oh my God. And it was, was this a person you knew? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Everybody knows everybody. Okay. Yeah. Every, so we, it's, we all it's like a little, uh, it's it's like a a, a little um, uh, click of sorts, not a click. Basically, what do I want to say? It's a, a fraternity. It's a, it's a fraternity that goes a little Duck slower. In fraternity. That's not Where bad. the hell did she go? What the fuck is this? My dog you know? was barking. I had to go make her lay down. Have you made any uh, any further plans on the move or the fencing? Or yeah, you got something to do there with the armless lady, don't you? What we <laughs> handless. <laughs> <laughs> armless. What is it again? Uh, She's her armless. arms. Yeah. Is she shoulder shoulder down or elbow down? It turns out her arms are actually there, but there was a lot of reattaching of things that had to happen. Uh, which I only know because so I found an got, article. Does about she have her. like ears on the end what of her wrist or something? <laughs> I've, I found an article about her. I don't. You what? I'm not gonna. Oh. Yeah, because. I just, I don't know. I, f I Googled it and I found an article where like 10 years ago, she got the use of her fingers back. And that was like 10 years after the attack. So it's been a while. What oh, is this? The like fucking penny saver? <laughs> no, one of the TV stations did a story on her. Oh, that's I'm, I'm going to say she's one of those local TV celebrities. Every couple of years, they do a little yep. feature on her and they'll say like, you know, I don't know what her name is, but I'm so I'll make up a name like a uh, oh Veronica. Uh, <laughs> got the two years ago, Veronica got the touching her fingers back, and now she's diddling herself again and, and really enjoying it. Well, they didn't mention the diddling, but I guess it's possible that now she can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, because baby. that's yeah. where all you the want a stub job, is. baby. But anyway, <laughs> give you a nice stub job right on the corner. <laughs> yeah, we had we had the inspections done on both places. How did that go? The place that I'm buying had no major problems. And the place nice. that I'm selling, um, the only big <laughs> the only big problem was apparently a critter has made a little nest in my crawl space and I had no idea. So, oh, that's not big. Um there's some there's that was the big that was the biggest problem, which I'm happy oh, about. It's nothing. Um yeah, it, there was some moisture in the crawl space and there's a nest of some kind. So there's a crawl space specialist coming tomorrow, um, ordered by the buyer to see what the situation is and whatever it is I have to pay to fix down there so that he can buy the house. But other than that, both both inspections so went a, well. A guy, a, a guy is coming with a have a heart trap and, I mean, and a, the, a broom. The animal was not under there when the guy was in there inspecting it and he put a big brick against the door so nothing can get in um, because the door was a little janky janky um, they're gonna put a new door on it yeah I'll probably have to put a new door on it and whatever happens with the moisture in the crawl space i don't really know how crawl spaces work and i certainly don't go into crawl spaces so i don't know but that's fine so that's that's good my lender said i don't need an appraisal and you know so we just have to get through the appraisal of the one I'm selling and we're nice. set to go. We're six weeks away from me not having to listen to this bullshit on the other side of my wall anymore. So you, oh, you'll be good. Your guys are going to come and clean. You're going to get guys going to come clean. He's going to throw a uh, dehumidifier up there and everything's going to be fine. So that's done. Mm -hmm. That's good. And what <laughs> did, the, did the people next door know you're moving? Oh yeah. 
I mean, there's been a for sale sign in front of my house since the beginning of December. So, oh, does it say sold now? Does it have the little sold thing on no, top? Not yet. I don't know if she's going to do that after you know because we're still in that ten day period right. before where Rescind. yeah yeah where everybody can still walk away. Yeah. So I don't know if she is going to wait until that happens before. But no, I haven't oh. talked to them about it or anything other than the fact that yep, I'm selling it. If you know anybody who wants to buy it. Bring them over, but now it's too late. Oh, could you imagine that? Then another crazy fucker moving. Now, is the person you're selling to are they buy, are they moving in, or are they uh, is it going to be um, investment? He is moving in. This is so. I told you guys that I spied on the people that were, you know, looking at my place right in the security yes. cameras, and this the this kid came twice to look at it. The first time was with his mom. He's he's in his twenties. Yeah. And he and his mom were both over the top, like, oh, my God, I love this one. This is my favorite one we've seen so far. And then when he came back the next week to look at it again, it was just him and his realtor. And he said, after they looked through it, they're standing in my living room. And he goes, this is just the kind of place I've always pictured myself living in. I was like, oh, bless your little heart. Raise your standards, but also buy my house. You know what, though? Could you, at the age of 20, ever have thought of buying a house? No. No. Chris? Uh, yeah, I had my first house at uh, 22. No, not here. <laughs> yeah. At 22, I was working for Norma Eilenberg in Rome, New York, barely making any money. I couldn't make enough uh, to pay the rent, so I certainly no, couldn't have afforded to making, buy a house. I can't believe you were making more than maybe... Thirteen thousand. I, I think here? I don't think I was making oh, that. I think I, I was making twelve, ten, or twelve thousand. I was a traffic reporter at twenty-two, and I was making twenty-five five, flying over DC twice yeah, a day, but, split shift. And I know Julie was making at least that, and we bought a townhouse for a hundred and eleven thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Wally, why don't you have I sound? Was, that was there we go. There you go. That was 20 years after I, I was the same age about. Okay. I so mean, you, you, I didn't buy my first this is the first house that I bought and I bought it at 45. I own no property right now and I love it. This yeah, is great. Th th there is something to be said about living in a place where you're not responsible for the the mowing, the plowing, the shoveling, the roof, the water. The, the there is something to be said about not having to if something breaks. For sure, I'm just you're not out to ten grand. For sure, I'm not responsible for. Uh, uh oh, U.S. military shoots down high altitude object over Lake Huron. That was 19 minutes ago. Another one. Another one. Another one. What is going what on with the these fucking fuck? party balloons? I posted a meme the other day about the the first one, and it and it showed Mork from Orc busting out of the egg. I saw that. That was great. <laughs> Nanu Nanu. Wasn't that Mirth? Mirth. Oh yeah. Oh, Mork came out of the egg. Mirth was his. Uh, Jonathan Winters played Mirth. Yeah. Was, that's fucking. It's on. This whole thing is unbelievable to me that 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 these balloons have been there forever mm -hmm. or for a long time. But now, like like um, like good Americans, and uh, you know, twenty people complained and made a big loud splash about it. Now we're going to shoot down every fucking balloon we can find. Let's get and, and, and make and it's going to make news. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's gonna it's it, you're gonna find out. Hey, uh, this is uh, W uh, ABC. You shot down our weather balloon. You motherfuckers. We can't tell you what's coming now because that was our Doppler balloon, you <laughs> fucks. Yeah, I now we're just gonna overreact and they are. They're gonna be shooting down fucking everything. Well. And it'll make news and it'll be, you know, some some bullshit. What, what, uh, now and, and people are just gonna send balloons up now. It'll only make news until people get jaded and tired of seeing it and stop caring, and then they'll find something else to blow out of proportion. Oh yeah, ab that is absolutely correct. Because we, we live in this fucking world of you know, um, uh, you know, is there something under your cabinet, under your sink that's killing you? Stay tuned. We'll tell you right after the weather. Hmm. 
<laughs> and, but but and 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 it's it's like oh it's uh this cleaner if you're using this cleaner it'll kill you yes only if you fucking drink three gallons of it mm-hmm. twice a day mm-hmm. for 32 years you might die like a mouse did when they injected that same amount right into their fucking bloodstream. The the way the media takes the smallest thing from any study, no matter what it's about, if it's something that's killing you, if it's the food that might make you never have a heart attack or the food that might make you immediately have a heart attack, they they take this information from these studies and they're like, what's the one piece we can blow out of proportion, take it yeah. out of context to where it's literally meaningless and make everybody think that's the thing. And now let's all drink celery juice. Like, it's, just, <laughs> it's it's so stupid. What is the what is the new medication that that is supposedly takes weight off of you very quickly? I don't. I don't oh, know. um, cocaine. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that me. diet. That that was a that was a diet for we've the all very done young. that diet. Yeah, that diet was for for the very young. <laughs> that that was the cocaine and speed diet. Is that that new uh, the the diabetes? Uh, I it might the be diabetes, diabetes shot. Yeah, it might be a diabetes medicine. I think it might be. Yeah, I think you're right. But what I understand is it makes you look incredibly old in the face that it does something to the muscles. Fuck, is that what happened to me? But the way that our society works now, people are like, I don't care if I look old. At least I'm not fat. Look at all of these diet medications they advertise on TV. And it's like the side effects for these diet medications are that you might have cancer and arthritis and name your disease. But at least you won't be fat anymore. You won't be fat. Your your colon might What's going on Uh-oh, with your sound his there? Microphone, his microphone gating is doing it again. Yeah. Is, is my, hold on. Is your, I think it might be the cord. How's that? Is that any better? No, you're far, super far, far no. away now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you sound awful. It's, it's your DBX. You think so? Oh, there, there it is. There you go. There you go. Yeah, no, I think there's something wrong with my, uh, I think I need, get, need to get a new cord. Oh. There's something wrong with my cord, too. Yeah. I, is I think that a the penis joke? Order. That is a penis joke. Okay. That is correct. Just checking. <laughs> I, I missed the penis joke. Was it something about your cord? It was. It was something about my cord. I mean, let, 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 let's just say the XLR doesn't shoot anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I need to get a new... It, what it is is the, uh, yeah, the XLR on uh, the connector is not good. I've got to get a new connector. That, that's my problem. It's, it's, the, it's the headpiece. You're correct. <laughs> Everybody you, Chris, likes a good have, headpiece. I've hit the nail right on the head. Come Thank on. You, Come right on. Right on the pecker. Does that mean it's, <laughs> is, it t- is it time for us to wrap up now that everything's a penis no, joke? No way. Oh, I haven't really said much about my Yeah, you haven't done a show. penis joke yet, have you, Jess? I yeah, let's talk about your big talk real quick. Yeah, well, well, where's your penis joke? I, I didn't come prepared with a penis joke. She didn't Chris, come. Chris mentioned <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're 12. <laughs> Chris mentioned pooping. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and pooping, by the way, isn't that a funny word? Pooping. Poop, pooping really does bring a little a little smirk to my face when I say poop. What, what is your most unfavorite word? My most unfavorite word? Yeah. As we get to the end of the program here, my un, most unfavorite. See, I dated a girl. Well, if this were a job stand. interview, I would say can't be done. Well, no, thank you. Now, I had a girl that I dated once, and she hated oh, yeah. the word panties. She couldn't stand panties. Panties. Why? And I had another girl that had a, a really odd reaction to the word ramekin, and I don't know why. But <laughs> ramekin? My, ramekin, what was she yeah. Ramekin, yeah. cousin or something? I don't I, want a I, ramekin. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> my unfavorite asshole. There's nothing good that can come from an asshole. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, you, you may be right. It's the hole you shit from, right? Asshole is a very good summary word too. It summarizes a lot of shit. Mm. It does. It absolutely does. No and, you intended. know, you made your uh, you made your joke there. Let me go ahead and make the uh, same joke. What do rednecks do on Halloween? Pumpkin. <laughs> 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 Uh, he had the, you know what chris ha- I, chris has like a black where where we might have a black book of people names you know address chris sounds like he in his back pocket he's got a book of those little one liners he just Dad he's jokes. waiting for us to walk into it mm-hmm. i got something you can walk into. Say, they mention 
We mentioned fucking relatives. You said I've got something uh, you can walk into. Was that a penis joke? Go. Because no, <laughs> that's a vagina see, joke. See, he wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to walk into that. Okay, that's I a mean, vagina like, joke. Look, my my schmeckle is a little bit, a little bit tucked under my belly, so I don't really think he's gonna <laughs> walk into that. Yeah. So here's. <laughs> let me tell you about this. And, and Jess, you won't experience this, but boys. Says you. So when you pee sometimes, so, 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 you know, Jess, you obviously know what a penis looks like. I do. You know, and this is, is that, is this, <laughs> it sometimes will tuck up. Even if you're circumcised, it, it, it shrinks down. Uh-huh. Don't you hate that? I do. Because when you go to pee, because lots of times guys don't touch their genitals when they pee. You just pop down your, your shorts, your underwear, and just sort of rests on the top. And you just oh pee. no, no! I gotta, I gotta fucking go digging, Wally. I don't know what your dick looks no, like. No, I, I, I don't gotta go dick. in there for the pull. Yeah, no, I don't have to go in for the pull. So sometimes you just let it rest. But what you don't realize is the the the, the mushroom has shrunk back into the the skin area, and you start pissing, and, and it just drips down your leg. Well, maybe that's your problem when we were talking about you pissing everywhere. Maybe you need to take a grasp on the thing. Yeah. No, 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 no. It, it, it is the multi-directional piss when the thing is, when, when it's in its, you know, in its regular state. But maybe when you're pissing relaxed. down your leg is why your bathroom is so nasty. No, 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 no. That's something entirely. That, that's the, I heard a great <laughs> line of this. I was, I, I, I read, uh, I read, I read something from David Sedaris and uh, <laughs> David Sedaris wrote, he wrote about that whole thing where guys have a tendency. I know girls do too, that you pee, but the gasket doesn't work the way it used to. So when you tuck it back in or pull up your drawers, you get the leakage. Because mm-hmm. the he said, my gasket doesn't work anymore, which now, is such a fantastic description of that leakage that happens yeah. after you pee. That that, that you like you think you're done. And then you stand up or you, you know, I don't sit down and pee. You, you, you pull up your drawers, you, you walk away and go like, oh, fuck, I dribbled. <laughs> well, we certainly aren't the only ones that have peeing problems. I, oh, I dated no. a girl several years ago who had three kids. And oh, my yeah. favorite thing to do was to tell her a joke and she yeah. would start laughing hysterically. And be, <laughs> fuck you, I peed. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that is a. Uh, that happens in my house too. Mm. There, there, there that, 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 but it's 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 the part. It, the gasket just doesn't shut closed all the way. The faucet doesn't sh- close all the way, even though you think it does. Now, women can do kegels to help with that. Is there is there a kegel like thing for men? Yeah, you can pull it. You you can exercise that muscle. You can. I'm doing that right now, Jess. Oh, good. You got to gotta be able to find the muscle. Is the problem at the bowling alley the other night? Jenna is there, and you know, I gave her a. A playful tap on the ass. Okay. So she turns around and grabs what she thinks is my dick. And I announced all 10 lanes of the bowling alley. I'm like, all right, baby, that was my fupa. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Nice pull. <laughs> Jesus. It's, it's, it's terrible There's having a fat upper penis button. area. Oh, that's, be- that's beautiful. So uh, predictions on Super Bowl before we go anywhere. Uh, the I'm, script I'm- has already been released. Oh, is Philadelphia winning? Philadelphia 3734 the script is online already. Oh it is okay. Yeah. So I I'm 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 30 I'm I'm Philadelphia too but I'm uh, 38 24. Do you have any uh squares? No, oh no, I just have a uh, Oh, I, have I do a, have I squares. Have now that you mentioned yeah, it. I, I'm I'm looking at mine right now and this one is how the fuck did I get this 2 and 9? Yeah, that's full not- shit. No, that's that's really awful. Actually, well, two and nine, no, and yeah, then I mean, there's that, that, that's three. That, that's twelve. Uh, oh, and five is one. If, let's see the five. Not good. Mm. And then I have six and two. The two is not as bad as you think. Then I have nine and nine. Hmm. So I'm okay with that one. I'm, you know what? That one, that one could be worse. Shit. And there's a couple up at the bowling alley. I need to go over there and take a picture of the one on the wall real quick before they close. Nine and nine is, is not, I think that's probably your worst set. Ugh. yeah. They used to have, you know, rocket mortgage used to do, I used to love that fucking rocket mortgage. 
because you you get a square on Rocket Mortgage and they'd pay off your mortgage if you won. You win five hundred thousand dollars. Really? Oh, I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, re- you remember that they did, no. they did that. That was a huge oh, thing for them. I probably didn't awesome. have a mortgage. Do they still do that? No. Uh, no. Yeah, Rocket Mortgage. I think is dead, isn't it? No. They did it last year. Are they, they still did, alive? They're still alive. They, they did. Okay. I, I think they did it. I think they did it last year. But the, yeah, they did it last year. This year they're not doing it. No. It's oh, sucked. I, not, I got a seven and one too. A seven and one is good, huh? That's for the first quarter, though. Yeah. That, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That could happen. Yeah. yeah that, now that you, you could hit that. Yeah, you know, a monkey could fly out of my asshole too, Jess. Well, <laughs> both are not likely. You know what? If a monkey fell out, flew out of your asshole, and you told us, "Hey, a monkey flew out of my asshole," I'd say I'm not surprised. Yeah, I would you say just that think too. it's a well, one-liner. I'm really not surprised if a monkey flies out of your asshole. Hey, look, Chris Roth, monkey flew out of his asshole while he was being taken over a sawhorse in a duck pen bowling alley. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's my life. News All right, time 11. to wrap this shit up. <laughs> All right, right. You guys. 